Today I'm going to talk about this Zigbee sprinkler controller. I'm Blake, professional innovator and designer in pursuit of the invisible smart home. Water leak alert. <laughs> four AA batteries that it didn't include and it's I guess it's sealed here for outdoor applications and I think uh, some good application for it I guess is for your kind of a homemade DIY uh, sprinkler system when I initially purchased it it's a Zigbee device I kind of hoped I would uh, be able to connect it with smart things but uh, it didn't work um, Maybe eventually it'll work. The market does seem to be going that way. So I ended up buying this uh, or this hub, Zigbee hub that works with Tuya and Tuya and Smart Life. So we're gonna get this connected, get this connected to this, and then uh, you know do some testing and, and install it. Let's get the hub connected first. Yeah, it's very small. It's almost the size of a, a leak sensor. I presume I can use my existing uh, to you uh, Smart Life app. All right, so I've paired the hub to the uh, Smart Life app. I've uh, installed the batteries, and I'm going to put the cover on here in a second. And it came with an extra screw, and that's a good thing because I lost one <laughs> somewhere on my desk or on the floor. And uh, I've paired this to the hub and it's shown up in the app. All right, so there, there it is there. I called it guarding valve. What the screens look like for that. So it uses a, uh, a bi-stable latching valve in there. Just a small click to open and close the valve. And it uses the uh, water pressure to get the valve uh, open or closed with this bi-stable latching solenoid. Which is good because bi-stable means that it's only drawing, the solenoid's only drawing power when it, you click it, you know, for a few uh, milli, a few hundreds of a millisecond. This is a sealed compartment for the batteries, which is good. So let's install it on the, uh, the garden with the uh, sprinkler and play around with some uh, settings. All right, so let's install it on the line here. The button is handy there. Hopefully it'll still be connected to my Wi-Fi out here on the opposite side of the house. All right, so I should be able to turn on the water. I'm going to turn on the water here. It looks like the water is on, so I, let's click this and try again. So now the water is not on. Let's just see if that matches my phone, and the phone works. Oh, got a bit of a leak here. I gotta tighten that a bit more. Oh, it's not leaking from here, it's leaking from the valve, so that, oh, it's an old valve. <laughs> I need to replace that valve, but let's not worry about that for now. Let's get to the app. All right, garden hose. Says off. Let, that, that, uh, Taking a second here. I guess it must be a bad uh, connection out here. That didn't work. So I'm going to go and move that uh, Zigbee hub a little bit closer somewhere and we'll try again. All right, so I've moved that Zigbee hub a little bit closer. So hopefully it's connected to Wi Fi internally, but it's a little closer to this valve. And let's see what happens. There, you can see the water went on. I can see this hose is filling up. It's one of these stretchy hoses. Looks like it comes preset with a uh, per liter limit. So the first time I tried it, I turned it on and then it just turned off a few seconds later. So it had one liter, so I'm, I've set it to 10. So let's just turn it on again. All right, so this will run, I guess, for 10 liters. It's showing me it's at 4 liters. Uh, it's at 8 liters and 37 seconds. Now it's at 10 liters 
and it's turned off. So that's a pretty cool solution. You can um, set the limit by liter and you can set um, timers and I wonder if you can do schedules here. I guess in automation in the app you could probably set up uh, schedules. Um, I like the uh, the way the uh, timer works here. Let's watch it. So let's uh, let's just set it to two liters. Make it three liters. Takes a second to save it, and then we're going to turn it on and watch the uh, timer and the liters. You can see the hose there is filling up. Alright, so it looks like you can also set it by duration. So we're on capacity here now and you can set the capacity and then when it meets its capacity setting it'll stop. I've tested it on 1 liter, 3 liters and 10 liters and I guess you can do duration as well. It's just switching over here. Let's try setting something there. Let's just set one minute. Confirm. And just for the hell of it, turn it on. And I'll probably just fast forward for this, but you'll get the idea. You can see the pipes. I can see the pipes filling up there. Here. Set 20 seconds. I'll let it go to a minute and it should stop. 40 seconds, another 20 seconds and it should shut off. It should stop in about 3 seconds. Yeah, there it goes. It shut off. Alright. So that's cool. So in conclusion, I think this is a pretty cool solution. Um, it was kind of a bonus that it actually has a flow. It measures the, uh, the flow. So I assumed it was just going to come with like an on-off thing and um, you would set a time or schedules in your app to uh, turn it off and on. So you can do that, but you can also set uh, schedules based on uh, how much flow there is, which is kind of a cool idea. And it seems like a solid uh, solution. So the only thing, and the only other thing I didn't like is that I couldn't directly pair it with my smart thing. So I have to have another app and I had to add the had to add this uh, Zigbee Hub. Perhaps in the future, smart things will integrate this directly, or there'll be another supplier that has a Zigbee version that uh, integrates uh, directly. Please give me a thumbs up and look for my next video. Cheers.